What is a flutter valve? How does it work? How do you use it? What is pep therapy? What is an acapella device? These are all common questions for those who work or are involved in respiratory care, and that is exactly what we are going to discuss in this video. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Before we go any further, just know that we are not doctors and this video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Please speak with your doctor for medical advice and treatment. So now that we got that out of the way, first and foremost, what is a flutter valve? A flutter valve is a handheld device that is used as a type of breathing therapy. It helps to clear mucus from the lungs as well as make breathing easier and more comfortable. It is a triangularly shaped cylinder that is sometimes green or blue in color. It's a type of oscillatory PEP therapy that loosens secretions in the lungs and helps the patient to cough them up in order to clear the airways. You may have heard it referred to as an acapella device. As simple as it looks, these devices cause both airway vibrations and PEP therapy, so they essentially provide dual therapy for the patient. What are the indications for using a flutter valve? People who are suffering from chronic bronchitis and cystic fibrosis, among other cardiopulmonary diseases, sometimes produce a large amount of mucus in their airways. This, of course, is a problem that needs to be solved, as it can lead to other issues. Besides, having mucus in an individual's lungs is just not healthy. That's where this little gadget can come in handy. The indications for using this device include the following. To prevent or reduce atelectasis, to help a patient remove secretions and clear the airways, to help reduce air trapping, and to maximize the delivery of aerosolized medications to patients who are receiving bronchial hygiene therapy. So now you may be wondering, how do you use a flutter valve device? For someone who is using a flutter valve for the first time, you may want to make sure that the resistance dial is set counterclockwise to the lowest frequency setting. This will make it easier to blow into the device. If you want to make it more difficult, you can just simply increase the resistance. Of course, this applies whether you're using the device on yourself or with the patient. Before performing a maneuver, you can sit in a chair by keeping your back straight. Keep your elbows resting comfortably on the table and then tilt your head slightly upward. This will help to keep the upper airway open wide, which allows the air you exhale to be able to flow out smoothly. Then you'll want to take a breath that is deeper than a normal inhalation. Make sure that your lips make a tight seal around the mouthpiece, then blow into the device with a forceful exhalation. Typically, you should blow out twice as fast as normal, but not as hard as you can. Then repeat this process for approximately 10 breaths. After the final attempt, be sure to cough in order to remove the secretions from the airways. You can even perform two to three huff coughs in order to increase secretion removal as needed. This whole process can be repeated once per hour, depending on your doctor's recommendation. One thing to keep in mind is that you must be able to exhale for at least three to four seconds while using the device. If you fail to maintain your exhalation for this advised length of time, that means that it's too easy. In this case, you need to turn the adjustment dial to increase the resistance. This adjustment will help you or the patient exhale at a lower flow rate by raising the total resistance of the device. So real quick, let's talk about the parts of a flutter valve. First, you have the removable mouthpiece, the body of the device, the expiratory resistance dial, the one-way inspiratory valve, and the OD connection. Switching gears just a bit, what are the different types of flutter valves? There are two types that you should know about, the green model and the blue model and they're based on the capability of the patient's expiratory flow. For example, the green model is more difficult. It's indicated for patients who can generate an expiratory flow of greater than 15 liters per minute. The blue model is less difficult. 
it's indicated for patients who can generate an expiratory flow of less than 15 liters per minute. So now you may be wondering, how does the flutter valve work? Well, the device itself has a steel ball that rests internally near the valve. As the patient breathes into the device, the ball rattles against the valve, causing vibrations. And it's these vibrations that help to loosen up the secretions from the patient's airways. Also, as the patient blows into the device, back pressure is created. This essentially helps open up the alveoli in the lungs, which helps to treat and prevent atelectasis. So basically, the flutter valve helps to remove secretions, and it also helps to open up the alveoli, which prevents atelectasis. What are the contraindications for using a flutter valve? There are actually no absolute contraindications for using one of these devices. However, the following points need to be carefully assessed before a decision is taken to initiate this type of therapy. Does the patient have an untreated pneumothorax? Do they have hemoptysis? Is their intracranial pressure greater than 20? Do they have acute dyspnea or severe nausea? So if you're a medical professional and your patient has any of these findings, flutter valve therapy may be contraindicated in such a case. And that leads us to the hazards. What are the hazards of using a flutter valve? While you may not think that blowing into a small plastic device is dangerous, there definitely are some hazards and complications that you should be aware of. First, there is barrel trauma, which occurs if the lungs are overinflated. Or there is increased intracranial pressure. There could be a decreased venous return to the heart an increased work of breathing, and air swallowing that can lead to nausea or vomiting. And again, these are just some of the hazards that you should consider before using one of these devices on yourself or on one of your patients. And many people often wonder, where can I purchase a flutter valve? In order to purchase one of these devices, you're probably going to need a prescription from your doctor or medical care provider. But with that said, these devices can be purchased online for recreational use, although this typically is not recommended. In my opinion, you should definitely consult with your doctor before buying or using one of these devices, but just know that there are some available online to purchase for recreational use. So just to recap, now you know pretty much everything there is to know about flutter valves. We have some other helpful videos on airway clearance therapy. I'll put them up on the screen now, and also I'll drop some links for you down below in the description. If you want to support the channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I hope you found this information to be helpful. I wish you all the best, and as always, breathe easy, my friends.